So Michael Beard is in New Mexico and he's just rendezvoused with his business associate, uh, Toby Hammer. Uh, and they're about to set off next morning um, across the desert to Lordsburg for the grand opening of their pilot project of um, artificial photosynthesis. But now they're having a meal together. With wine and water, they raised a toast to magical thinking. Then they continued a conversation they had been having by email for some months. To an eavesdropper, it would have sounded like the essence of commercial tedium. But to the two men, it was a matter of urgency. How many orders for solar panels were necessary to bring the unit cost down to the point at which they could feasibly claim that a medium-sized artificial photosynthesis plant could generate electricity as cheaply as coal. The energy market was highly conservative. There was no premium for being virtuous, for not screwing up the climate system. Orders for 7,000 panels, this was their best calculation. Much would depend on whether they could reliably power Lordsburg and its environs night and day for a year through all kinds of weather. And it also depended on the Chinese, how fast they could move, and how plausibly they could be threatened by the prospect of losing the business. In that respect, the recession helped, but it would also depress demand for panels, if not for energy. They went round this topic a few times, quoting figures, plucking others from the air. Then Hammer leaned forward and said confidentially, as though the sole waiter on the far side of the restaurant might hear him, but chief, can you be straight with me? Tell me, is it true? The planet's getting cooler. What? You keep telling me the arguments are over, but they're not. I'm hearing it everywhere. Last week, some woman, some professor of atmosphere studies or something, was saying so on public television. Whoever she says she is, she's wrong. And I'm hearing it everywhere from business people. It seems like it's building. They're saying the scientists have gotten it wrong, but don't admit it. Too many careers and reputations on the line. Well, what's their evidence? They're saying a 0.7 degree rise since pre-industrial times, that's 250 years ago, is negligible, well within the usual fluctuations. And the last 10 years have been below the average. And we've had some bad winters here. That doesn't help our cause. And they're also saying that too many people are going to get rich on the Obama handouts and tax breaks to want to tell the truth. Then there are all these scientists, including the one I was talking about, who signed up to the Senate Minority Report on Climate Change. You must have seen that stuff. Beard hesitated, then called for more wine. That was the trouble with some of these Californian reds. They were so smoothly accessible. They went down like lemonade, but they were 16% alcohol. He could not help feeling that this conversation was beneath him. It wearied him, like talking about or against religion or crop circles and UFOs, for that matter. He said, it's 0 0.8 now. It's not negligible in climate terms. And most of it has happened in the last 30 years. And 10 years is not enough to establish a trend. You need at least 25. Some years are hotter, some are cooler than the year before. And if you drew a graph of average yearly temperatures, it would be a zigzag, but a rising zigzag. When you take an exceptionally hot year as your starting point, you can easily show a decline, at least for a few years. That's an old trick called framing or cherry picking. As for these scientists who sign some contrarian document, they're in a minority of a thousand to one, Toby. Ornithologists, epidemiologists, oceanographers and glaciologists, salmon fishermen and ski lift operators. The consensus is overwhelming. Some weak-brained journalists write against it because they think it's a sign of independent thinking. And there's plenty of attention out there for a professor who'll speak against it. There are bad scientists, just like there are rotten singers and terrible cooks. Hammer looks sceptical. If the place isn't hotting up, we're fucked. As he refilled his glass, Beard thought how strange it was that after being associates for all these years, they had rarely discussed the larger issue. They had always concentrated on the business, the matter in hand. Beard also noticed that he himself was close to being drunk. He said, here's the good news. 
the UN estimates that already a third of a million people are dying from climate change. Even as we speak, the inhabitants on the island of Cateray in the South Pacific are being evacuated because the oceans are warming and expanding and rising. Malarial mosquitoes are advancing northwards across Europe. Methane is pouring out of the Siberian permafrost. There's a meltdown under the Greenland ice sheet no one really wants to talk about. Amateur yachtsmen have been sailing the Northwest Passage. Two years ago, we lost 40% of the Arctic summer ice. The future has arrived, Toby. Yeah, Hammer said, I guess. You're not convinced. Here's the worst case. Suppose the near impossible. The thousand are wrong, the one is right, the data are all skewed, there's no warming. Then we still have the old standbys, energy security, air pollution, peak oil. No one's going to buy a fancy panel from us just because the oil's going to run out in 30 years. What's wrong with you, Toby? Trouble at home? Nothing like that. Just that I put in all this work, then guys in white coats come on TV to say the planet's not heating. I get spooked. Beard laid a hand on his friend's arm, a sure sign that he was well over his limit. Toby, listen. It's a catastrophe. Relax.